Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Young here and welcome to another Elder Scrolls Online news update. The following news comes from gaming website IGN. One of their journalists got 4 hours of hands-on time with this highly anticipated game. I recommend you go and read their whole article, but if you're only interested in new information, here is everything you need to know. The very first thing IGN's article points out is that the game is not like Skyrim, Oblivion or Morrowind in a number of ways. Merchants won't won't have a limited quantity of money, inventory will work more along the lines of MMOs we are used to, so not the weight point system that slows you down if you carry too much, you can't go around on a killing spree like we're used to doing in an Elder Scrolls game, and you cannot strip people naked and take exactly what they're wearing and carrying. While players can take items into their inventory, they cannot physically grab them and throw them around, and players cannot go around grabbing pots, plates and all the little trinkets scattered around the world. Even small features like sitting on chairs will not make a return. Furthermore, the world will not adapt with you as you level up. Areas will have set monsters with set levels as is typical in most MMOs. In other words, to make this game a balanced MMO, compromises had to be made. The good news is that the game still feels like an Elder Scrolls game, according to the article. The game keeps a lot of the series' trademark features. First, the game visually screams Elder Scrolls. After having gone from Morrowind to the island of Stross Mackay to the orcish island of Bethnik, IGN's player was pleased with the ambience of the game. When encountering NPCs, the player could choose from a myriad of dialogue options as is traditional with Elder Scrolls games. What's more is that during quests, these dialogue options have a significant effect on the outcome of quests. We're not just talking about choosing between the light side or the dark side like in Old Republic. The choices in Elder Scrolls Online resemble what's found in games like Morrowind, Oblivion and Skyrim, in which choices aren't necessarily about black and white, but more about cause and effect. IGN's example involves rescuing a thief named Jakarn from prison and recapturing his stolen gem. But eventually the player encounters an orc named Moglerkal, demanding the jewel be returned. The player could choose from a variety of options, such as lying or dealing with the situation in different ways. These choices aren't necessarily about one being good and the other one being evil, but about cause and effect. What is interesting is that when quests are tackled in groups, each individual can make his or her own choice without influencing the outcome of other players' game session. In one quest, IGN chose to let a certain individual live, while another player in his group chose to let her die. Unfortunately, IGN doesn't go too much into detail in regards to how the system will work. Also familiar to Elder Scrolls fans will be the clean interface found in the game. The usual health, magicka and stamina bars will be displayed, and MMO veterans wishing to take advantage of the more complex interface these types of players are used to in MMOs, they can simply click the ALT button. Crafting also makes a return to the game from alchemy to enchanting and even cooking. According to the article, cooking resembles Skyrim system in that experimentation is involved. Now, perhaps most frequently asked about the game is the combat system. According to IGN, while players will discover some stiff animations, the combat does feel very much like an Elder Scrolls combat system. Players will feel the weight of their attacks and blocks. One mouse button can be used for regular attacks and power attacks if held down, and the other mouse button can be used to block and bash enemies. Fans of stealth can tap the control button to crouch and engage in stealth mode, allowing players to sneak up on enemies for stealth bonuses. Although in Elder Scrolls Online, the stealth bonuses come once you have gained a few levels. The one feature that IGN's player didn't get to try out was swapping between weapons instantaneously. For example, in a single player Elder Scrolls game, players could draw their bow and fire enemies from a distance, but once in close range, players could simply use one of the shortcut keys to instantly swap to another weapon such as a sword. According to an Elder Scrolls dev, players have to become level 15 to unlock weapon swapping. A curious choice. New to Elder Scrolls Online are action bars. Every time a new weapon is equipped, a new action bar pops up allowing for a good range of customization. Now, Elder Scrolls fans will be excited to know that first-person combat has made the cut for the game. This mechanic is still a work in progress as developers try to tweak this mode so that players can use it to play the game without throwing it off balance. Therefore, IGN was only greeted to a one-minute video showcasing the first-person view. The good news is that the player liked what he saw, especially the promise this first-person view holds for archery in this MMO. One of the last thing IGN's player talks about is customization, which players will find similar to Skyrim. I don't mean in terms of interface, but in terms of options. Everything from body build to, quote, 
how he squints are all customizable. Apart from choosing the race and look of your character, you will also get to choose a class. The three available classes for IGN's player were Dragon Knight, Sorcerer, and Templar. I am pleased to inform that these classes are more like suggestions rather than set in stone. That's right, you can choose the class Sorcerer and still wield a bow and equip medium armor as the IGN player did. If there is one thing that Elder Scrolls Online isn't missing, it is the freedom that the franchise has offered players since the very beginning. Finally, the article talks about some of the MMO features. While the game won't feature raids, because according to the game director Matt Firer, that's not Elder Scrolls, it'll still feature competitive PvP sieges with the three main factions as the foundation of the conflict, and will also feature cooperative play through dungeons. Players will also find what are called Dark Anchors, dynamic group events, very much like the Rifts in the MMO Rift, that opens Moloch Bal's plane of oblivion to wreak havoc upon the land that players must stop. In short, there will be tons to please fans of the MMO genre. And there you have it ladies and gentlemen, everything about IGN's 4 hour experience with Elder Scrolls Online and all the new features discovered through this hands on experience. Let me know in the comments below if you're excited for this game. I actually wasn't when it was first announced, but as more information is revealed about this game, the better it is looking. I'll be sure to keep you guys further updated on Elder Scrolls Online and all other Elder Scrolls games, so be sure to join the nation by subscribing to Young Gear. On my channel, I also cover other AAA franchises and will soon start reviewing games. Also, stay tuned for my game cinema, such as the upcoming Skyrim movie Dragonborn, coming on summer of 2013. So what are you waiting for? Click that subscribe button and join the nation, because every gamer needs an Asian. I'll see you guys next time, thank you very much, and young out!